Shalom and welcome to tonight's Beit Rafa broadcast. This is Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and uh, it's my joy to come to you again this evening. Hallelujah. And uh, we're on the 22nd, and it's Tuesday night. So, wow, time is just marching on, isn't it, as we get in, get into the fall here and the new year, and we're in the midst of the high holidays, or what some call them high holy days, or the days of awe, where we are <clears throat> in between uh, the Jewish New Year and Yom Kippur, which is uh, coming next week. And <clears throat> wow, these are prophetic times and exciting times as well. Uh, so uh, let me say hello to some of the dear ones that are coming on here. And Ricky and Ginger Rios Baez is, is the first one tonight. You should get a prize or something. No, <laughs> I'm just glad you're here. Hallelujah. Hello, dear ones. Amen. And uh, uh, let's see. Cheryl Sanger Morrison, bless you. And good evening, John Milkey. And Ina Ruth Summers, hello. And hello, Joanne Pease. <coughs> hello, Emmanuel Beosis. Good to have you <coughs> from the Philippines. Excuse me. I don't know, I just had a little something there. Hallelujah. Thank God for water. Lottie Ramos is watching. Welcome. Glad to have you. And Aaron Claxton, shalom to you. And uh, <clears throat> Ina Ruth is always encouraging. Hello, everyone. Great to be together again. Hallelujah. Diane Haney is watching and she says, hello, Mr. Maurice Sklar. Hello, hello. <coughs> and uh, Sean Powell says, greetings from Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Roger Levitt's with us this evening and Dennis and maybe Tammy as well, Constable. Good, always good to hear from you. Hallelujah. Have you with us. <coughs> Good night, good evening to Alexis Taylor and Michael Tobias. Hello. <coughs> oh my. And Cheryl Morrison is praying for me. Hallelujah. Well, I I'm always always I'm grateful for that. Use all the prayers I can get. And yes, Dennis and Tammy and Emily Schneider at Strickland is with us. And Cindy Mangiofico, that sounds, Mangiofico, maybe. Uh, that sounds very Italian, so you, I wonder if you're from Italy, actually. Sam Hagar, Hager is with us, and bless you. And Tulsa, from Tulsa, and, and let's see. Susan Johnson, bless you. Some names are easier to say than others. That one I can, I'm pretty confident that's how you say it. Susan Johnson, hello, Kari Rose. Yes, we were, I was praying for you last night. Um, you posted and I was, uh, kind of had a burden for you. I was praying in the spirit for you, Kari. Uh, Cindy says, that's correct. Well, I guess you're, where in Italy are you from, Cindy? <clears throat> Colinda Follett. Bless you. Good evening, Nancy Russo. Yes, I also was uh, <clears throat> also praying for you, and I saw a beautiful uh, picture you had. And the Lord, said, it's such a beautiful picture of the bride, and she she was saying Yeshua. And I think I posted that. It was beautiful. I found found that on 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 your uh, <clears throat> your uh, page there. Christine Brown. Hello. Shalom and Aniki Vanderwettering. Always good to have you. <clears throat> I can feel you. You're like a pillar in the spirit. You're very strong. And uh, you're doing, a, your prayer life has really made a difference. And not only these, uh, Beit Rafa 
Of course, I, I didn't know if I'd mentioned Beit Rafa. That's what this is. It's House of Healing. It's an online uh, daily uh, congregation. Oh, yeah, there's Jeff Jeff Wells. Hallelujah. Jeff, uh, Devorah was just talking to me. I want you to come on. Um, let's find a time. I just would like to do a Zoom, a uh, little Zoom call with you and let you minister some on here and tell us about this uh Tell us about your new business and the apparel and your beautiful family and uh, give you a little time to... So if you want to, if you'd like to do that, I'd love to have you. Jeff is an old friend from, not old, but I've known him for a number of years now. And uh, he was originally from Springfield uh, uh, there in, in Missouri. And as his uh, parents had a beautiful church and they had a uh, this this Victorian mansion that was a part of the church and uh, called Elfendale Mansion. We always go up there and stay, and you know, and it's just a, not too far from Tulsa, so we used to go there. And and uh, of course, your your father, uh, uh, Jess Gibson and Paula, a great pastor, <coughs> did a wonderful work there and Cornerstone Church and. We met uh, through uh, ORU, I think, when we uh, Charismatic Bible Ministers Conference. So, anyway, Jeff, I really, uh, <coughs> I like, excuse me, I really like to have you um, come on and and talk about uh, just minister. You're, he's a powerful, uh, has a pastoral call, and just beautiful minister of the gospel and his family. Oh, anyway, I'm. I'm cavelling over you, Jeff. That means I, I say, my my friend Jeff. He's such a mensch. He's such a good man. So, hello, Becky Newlin and Jody White Judkins. Jody White Judkins, and um, and uh, oh, you're welcome, Nancy. Yes, I, hallelujah, Becky. Uh, yes, I said hello, Rob. Rob and uh, Jody are with us as always, almost yes. And uh, oh, Ricky and Ginger says Aniki's book is a wonderful example of her prayer life. I just knew she was. I I didn't I didn't know about her book, but I mean you might have mentioned it to me. But anyway, uh, you know, send me a little note. Send send me a um, something about your book, Aniki. I I'm very no. I I mean you. That some people are just major league, you know, in, in the realm of prayer. And, and I, uh, when I said, I just, you know, that when the devil's scared of you, you know that you have a track record. There's a lot of, a lot of victories. Uh, you know, it's like in the old West, you know, they have notches in their belt. <laughs> you, you've done something for God. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Linda Herndier, hello. Good to have you. And Carl Faye Johnson, good to have you back this evening. You're welcome, Aniki. And uh, Ina Ruth says, I just got her book this past Saturday. I'm so enjoying reading. Well, there's somebody else I need to... to uh, uh, Jeff has this really cool uh, line of T-shirts and apparel and stuff that he and his family are doing. And, and uh, you have... This book on prayer, so send it to me, and I'll, I'll. Uh, actually, I'd, I'd, I'd like to look at it and read it. So if you, if you can, if you want to send it, uh, send it. Actually, send it to me or online or something. Just let me know how. I'll, uh, I'll. Uh, uh, okay, Ricky says I got the Kindle version. Okay. Um. <clears throat> anyway, oh, Becky Newland says, "Ha ha, Amen." <laughs> Blessings. Hallelujah. Okay, well, listen, I I actually caught up with you there. There's still more coming online, and there'll, there'll be more as, as we... <clears throat> I want to do tonight, uh, I want to read you uh, a Shlomo story, because we haven't had one, and I just said, you know what? I don't want to miss that this week, and so I'm going to do that, even though it's not, it's not a... a uh, it's not Shabbat, but but it's uh, this is uh, <clears throat> for those of you that might not know. This is uh, was my wife's 
rabbi when she, for many years in New York City, uh, and he a, was a very mystical man, great worshiper, and a singer, Shlomo Karl Bach. Karl Bach. <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to meet him, but I didn't realize what a great, great man he wa he is, or he was, he is, of course, in, uh, he's, I believe he's with the Lord now. Uh, uh, Ruth Heflin, the great Pentecostal uh, <clears throat> apostle, really, uh, that was, she uh, said that she was very close with him when he was in Israel and that he, uh, he she led him to the Lord. And I, I actually believe he was a, he was a secret believer <clears throat> his whole life. I mean, he was so close to God. Every, he was just worshiping. He's David. He's like David. He just worshiped all the time. And <clears throat> I mean, he was really anointed and full of love. And if anyone exemplified the love of Yeshua, the way he treated people, it was, it was Rabbi Shlomo. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> but he was from Poland and, um, and, uh, you know, that Eastern Europe and, uh, that area, and so these are, he used to tell stories, and he, he would, and I like to try to imitate uh, the Yiddish accent a little bit, uh, so I, I like to read it in a, uh, in that way, because it gives it a little flavor, and, and some of them, they're all, they all have morals, they all have, um, you know, it, they're, they're, they're like mystical stories from the old country, from, the world of our fathers, the the world of of uh, the pale of Russia, the Ashkenazi Jews in Russia and Eastern Europe, uh, where my ancestors came from as well, and Devorah's. <coughs> Devora actually, we're going to get her on. I she y'all pray for y'all. Aniki, there's an assignment for you. Hallelujah! But uh, Devora has got great giftings in her. <coughs> She's a little shy. Uh, well. I wouldn't call her shy, actually. She, she's just, she's, <laughs> she, she, she's, she's the wind beneath my wings, though. She helps me because of her. I'm able to do this. In fact, uh, I wouldn't be here if she hadn't rescued me in life. And so, so anyway, <clears throat> but her father was a, Devorah's father was a Holocaust survivor that, um, actually fought with the Russian partisans and uh, grew up in the woods. Uh, he was, he lost his family. He was on the, a town um, <clears throat> right on the border of Poland and Russia. Uh, and uh, Terespol, I think was the name of the, and uh, <clears throat> they, uh, you know, the Nazis, uh, uh, were were uh, they, his whole family? I think was nearly his whole family was wiped out in the Holocaust. But somehow he escaped into the woods. He was nine years old, just a just a boy, and he the Russian partisans that were, you know, if you ever uh, if you ever saw the movie Defiance, um, that's. They were warriors. They didn't belong to Russia. They didn't belong to uh, the Nazis either. And they, they just fought. They were a militia group that lived, different groups that lived uh, in that area and just lived in the woods. And they, and they just foraged and fought. And, and they were very, very fierce. Uh, uh, you know, like that movie. It's a good movie. But <clears throat> he, was, he grew up from a boy with this this group and learned how to i mean he his specialty was fixing things and uh he could fix anything mechanical uh and he was very <clears throat> he used to blow up the bridges for where the nazi trains were because they and uh you know they didn't like they didn't particularly like jews but they didn't like the nazis so but he was uh <clears throat> they didn't mess with him because he had uh, he had no qualms about uh, taking care of business when it was necessary uh, with a gun or whatever. <clears throat> so he was a warrior. And uh, Devorah, I think, inherited some of that. <laughs> uh, that that, that um, chutzpah, that, that, that fire, that 
chazak, that's another word. That <clears throat> and and she's on her mom's side, she's Scottish. So don't mess with Devora. Man, don't, don't that's why I've you know, the Bible says train up a husband the way he should go. When he's old he won't doesn't it say that? <laughs> and I say, Yes, dear. <clears throat> yes, dear. <clears throat> but she has a heart of gold. And uh, a real anyway, so we're gonna get her on one of these days. I want her to light the candles for the uh for Friday nights and things like that. And so we're 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 on our way. We mom has been a real challenge because uh, it's taken so much of her time uh, and my ours, all of us. We have to we have to take care of of mom, and she's before long she'll be. She'll be with the Lord. Now, it's interesting. Uh, Devorah's mom, Audrey, is also the same name of my mom, Audrey, my real mom. But she uh, <clears throat> she actually uh, converted to, to Judaism uh, to marry Devorah's dad. And his name was was, was Harry or Her Heschel. Heschel and, and Mandelbaum was his name. And uh, so they shortened it to Man. So her... Uh, Devorah's name originally was, her maiden name was Man. So, <clears throat> why am I talking about that? I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, uh, this connection with this great, great Zadik, this great uh, Jewish uh, mystical man, uh, I actually, even though I never met him, the first time I heard him sing, I just melted. That was the very first date with divorce. She said, listen to this. And she she had one of those, one of the very first MP3 players. We were in New York. It was 2000 and, 2003, August. Uh, we had done, uh, Pastor Benny had done a, a big meeting at Madison Square Garden. And it was in August. And we had met. Um, and <clears throat> I just stayed, stayed uh, a couple extra nights there. At where we were, and and to and we went out, and she Devora took me out to Barney Greengrass, which is a, it's a funny name, but it's uh it's this hole in the wall place in the Upper West Side that that's very great Jewish food, and so fed me latkes, and I was sunk. I mean that's like kryptonite, you know. You can't. Uh, it, she did that, and I just fell in love with her. And, and that's, that's, but we were on the West Side Pier. We were walking around. He said, listen to this. And she got out this Arcos or Arcos or something. Arcos, uh, this MP3 player said, stick this in. And I heard, she said, this is my former rabbi. Listen to him. And she, return again, you know. And I, I just melted. I fell on my knee. I said, if that's not the anointing, then I'm an astronaut. I mean, I don't know what the anointing is. That's the anointing. Well, all he did was sing, worship God day and night, and and full of full of the word. And but so this is this man used to tell these stories, and so this is a <laughs> Shlomo story. How did I get? Uh, here we go. This is called fixing the exile. Dov Bauer, the Mezarech Magid, once wrote to the Magid of Mezarech, Rav Abraham Joshua Heschel, the after Rebbe, don't force my holy pupil, Zeb Zosia, to become a Rebbe, because he's already beyond that. I'm sure these words have many interpretations, but here is one story that helps explain what he meant. Fixing the exile. For two years, the Rebbe, Reb Zusia, and his brother, Rav Elimelech, walked around to fix the exile. According to Judaism, God and his Shekinah, his holy presence, are in exile. To understand their suffering, we too should taste something of that exile. Now, the exile was 
<clears throat> before uh, the the diaspora, the the dispersion of the Jews, um, and we were talking about that last night, actually. <clears throat> On another level, the Rebbe Rev Zushia and Rav Alimelech chose to get to know the world because they knew you can sit over a book for a hundred years, but it may never compare to what you learn in one day walking down the street. Of course, a Jew who wanders must always find a place to spend Shabbos. The brothers seem to have no difficulty in this. For every Thursday night, their father would come home to them in a dream and tell them where to pray for Shabbos and with whom to eat dinner. One particular weekend, as they were approaching a certain city, their father came from the other world and said to the rabbi Limelech, this week I want you to eat in the house of the rabbi. But to the rabbi, Reb Zusia, he said, Zusia, I want you to eat with the shoemaker. <laughs> Rav Limelech went to the rabbi's house and spent Shabbos there. Everything was in order. But there is nothing really to repeat. The Rebbe, Reb Zusia, went to the shoemakers, and the man wouldn't let him in the door. I know about people like you. You complain when you daven and when you pray. For, and for good reason. Your davening is four hours long. It takes you ten years to get your food down your throat. I work hard all week. When I daven on Shabbos, I daven fast. <laughs> I eat quickly and go to sleep. I don't want anybody in the house taking away from my rest. The Rebbe, Reb Zusia, who had a feeling that the shoemaker was a very special man, did his best to be welcomed. <clears throat> I'll do everything you do. I swear I'll daven fast. I'll eat quickly. Sleep. You'll have no complaints. The shoemaker agreed, but only after he had warned the Rebbe, Reb Zusia, if you don't keep your word, I'll throw you out in the middle of Shabbos. Friday night, they went to pray. The Rebbe, Reb Zusia, soon realized that there were only Lamed Vav Zadikim praying with the shoemaker. They daven so fast that one of the Rebbe Reb Zusia's blessings took longer than their whole service. After five minutes, their prayers were finished. They went back to the shoemaker's home for a feast, and as his host had warned him, they ate in a flash. Before the Rebbe Reb Zusia had time to settle down, they were already giving thanks for, for their food. The Rebbe, Reb Zusia, was so sure the shoemaker would be doing something special Friday night that he sat up all night waiting for his, the shoemaker to rise. But while the Rebbe, Reb Zusia, was sleeping, he was snoring, keeping watch. The shoemaker really slept. The next morning, the Rebbe, Reb Zusia, could barely wake up in time for prayers, which again lasted only a few minutes. The second meal, they also ate in record time. After giving thanks for food, the shoemaker stood up, stretched, and yawned. I am going to sleep. The Rebbe, Reb Zusia, also went and lay down, only this time he slept. When he awoke up, there was nobody in the house. Everybody seemed to be away. He wandered about until he found a little boy. Where's your father and mother? Where's everyone? Zosia asked. The boy pointed up, upward. They're in the attic for the third meal. The Rebbe Reb Zosia ran upstairs, only to find that the ladder to the attic had been pulled up, so he couldn't join them. <clears throat> so, the Rebbe Reb Zusia 
went outside and climbed a tree. Nobody knows quite how he managed, but he soon found himself hanging by one hand from the roof and swinging while he peered through the attic window. <laughs> the Rebbe Reb Zuzia looked and saw 36 families seated around the table, eating and learning. The shoemaker was sitting at the head of the table with his back to the Rebbe Reb Zuzia. He gave the Rebbe Reb Zuzia the shivers to think that he had been spending Shabbos in the home of the head of a 36 righteous men who held up the whole world. The Rebbe Reb Zuzia, hanging by one hand, afraid to fall, but not wanting to miss a thing, when those nearest the window saw him, they began to protest. Tell him to get down. He doesn't belong here. But when the shoemaker turned around and saw the Rebbe Rabzuzia hanging in the window, he said, I can't. He's my guest. I can't just throw him out. Then let him in. So the shoemaker opened the window and the Rebbe Rabzuzia climbed into the attic. Finally. Vault, <laughs> where he joined the 36 families for the third meal of Shabbos. I'm letting you in because I accepted you as my guest, but you must swear to me now that whatever you see or hear, you will tell no one. Because the Torahs that the Lamed Vav Zadikim tell each other are not for this world, the teachings. The Rebbe Reb Zusia swore. Obviously, he spent the highest third meal of his life. <laughs> the Rebbe Reb Zusia stayed for the meal and then left the shoemaker's house with his heart and his soul on fire. The next morning, the Rebbe Reb Zusia met up with Rebbe Limelech <coughs> again, <coughs> and they went together to the synagogue to pray. Rav Elimelech soon realized that the Rebbe Reb Zusia's davening that day was something extraordinary. The Rebbe Reb Zusia was praying the way he, Rebbe Elimelech, might pray on Yom Kippur. What happened to you this Shabbos? Your praying is incredible. I feel as if you climbed up the ladder two million miles and I am left far behind. The Rebbe Reb Zusia replied, Nothing happened. It was an ordinary Shabbos. <clears throat> Tell me about the shoemaker. The Rebbe Reb Zusia shrugged. Nothing special. Just a shoemaker. <clears throat> the Rebbe Reb Zusia shrugged. Nothing special. Oh, sorry. Nothing special. Just a shoemaker. Rebbe Limelech realized that the Rebbe Reb Zusia was hiding something from him. Zusia, listen to me. When we set out together in the world, we promised to share everything. We swore to each other. You swore to me. I'm holding you to that promise right now. The Rebbe Reb Zusia realized that he had indeed sworn to Rebbe Limelech long before his encounter with the shoemaker, that he would share all his experiences. As a second vow cannot annul the first, the first, <laughs> first, the Rebbe Reb, Reb Zuzia decided that he must tell his brother everything, and did so. That night, the two brothers came to the little inn, since they were very poor people, they slept, as usual, under the table. In the middle of the night, there was a heavy banging on the door. The nobleman entered, dressed in armor, his visor over his face. He asked the innkeeper, Have you a good room where I can sleep? The innkeeper said, For you, a nobleman, of course, I have the best. <clears throat> As the innkeeper was leading him upstairs, the nobleman spotted the two brothers sleeping under the table. Who are those two men? They're two rabbis with no money to pay. I'll pay for them. But we have no more rooms. 
make a bed for them in my room. I can't stand to see good people sleeping on the floor. It was crazy. Rabbi Emil Elimelech and the Rabbi Rabzusia were awakened and brought into the room upstairs. <coughs> the nobleman lay on the bed in his armor. They only had time to say thank you very much before they all went off to sleep. In the morning, the nobleman woke up very early and left. <coughs> but after an hour, he returned still in his armor. <laughs> What are those two Jews? Where? Where are those two Jews? One of them stole my watch. <clears throat> the innkeeper was very upset. I don't believe it. They look like two very honest people. I don't care what you think. One of them stole. <clears throat> the nobleman walked back to his room and grabbed the Rebbe Reb Zusia by the collar. Did you steal my watch? The Rebbe Reb Zusia said, No, I didn't steal your watch. The nobleman gave him a slap across the face. Jew, Jew, confess, you stole. But the Rebbe Reb Zusia insisted, I didn't, I didn't steal. The nobleman hit him hard across the mouth again. Confess, confess that you stole. <coughs> then the nobleman took Rebbe Limelech smacked him across the face and said, Confess, you're the one. You stole my watch. <clears throat> when neither would confess, he chained them both to his wagon and whipped his horses. I'm taking you both to the judge. <clears throat> and he dragged them away. The Rebbe Reb Zussi and Rebbe Elimelech, after their beating, had little strength left. They barely made it to the judge. A nobleman like the first, in armor and visor. The first nobleman said, One of these two Jews, maybe both, stole my watch. The judge ordered, Confess that you stole. No! Bang! He knocked the two brothers to the ground. After this, however, the two armored men left Rav Elimelech alone. Instead, they began knocking off the Rebbe Reb Zusia, but nobody knew why. The Rebbe Reb Zusia was mamash at his end. <clears throat> the nobleman and the judge announced, this is your last chance. Do you confess or not? Zusia cried out, I didn't steal from you. Why do you keep accusing me? <clears throat> the nobleman and judge took off their visors. The Rebbe Reb Zusia recognized the shoemaker and one other of the Lamed Vav Zadikim. Today, for breaking your vow to us, you were supposed to die. We prayed all night that you would escape with just a beating. So from now on, keep your vow, because if you ever say another word about us to anybody, Zusia, you will die instantly. Everybody knows that the Rebbe Reb Zusia never said Torah after that, never taught, because the Torahs that he would have given teachings were given over were not for this world, which is why the Mezrechecher Magid wrote to his pupil, the after Rebbe, don't force Zusia to become a Rebbe because he's already beyond that. Yeah, uh, that's that's kind of a it's fun to do the accent, but that's a real uh, that's that's almost too deep in Judaism for me. But uh, what we have a different way of perceiving spirituality than God does. Did you know God has an amazing sense of humor? He loves to laugh. Heaven is fun. Heaven is so much fun. There, God, God is not hung up at all with, you know, uh, being uh, with religion uh, in the sense. But he, he 
loves, he loves to, he loves it when we, he loves comedians. That's why, that's why so many Jews are such good comedians because <laughs> they, we've cried for so long that he finally says, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to have, I'm going to make, I'm going to make my people make everybody laugh instead of cry. And so there's a, uh, you know, and so we have the Seinfelds and the, you know, and the <laughs> whatever. Uh, but God loves to turn things upside down. And sometimes the holiest thing you can do, the most exalted thing you can do, is just, is really, it, it always is, to be a little child. That's what Yeshua said. You have to become like a little child to enter the kingdom of of God, the kingdom of heaven. And he said, this is greatest. Was the, you know, the, the 12 were all bent out of shape and trying to figure out, well, when, when Yeshua, you know, takes over the world, well, I'm going to be sitting here. I'm going to be sitting here. Who's the greatest? And he, they were all, uh, all worried about that. And Yeshua took a little child. A little child is a little child, uh, you know, three, three years old, say, before they really know what they're doing, because they're totally honest. It is just, he said, this is greatest. And when you finally, when you just be who you are, instead of trying to pretend to be something you aren't, that's called hypocrisy. So when you are, when you are genuinely who you are, you become, you become, and you're yourself, and you're not trying you're not afraid. See, the reason why people put masks on and play roles and all this because they're afraid inside. If they really knew who I was, they would reject me. And we feel that especially about God because he's so holy and we're we're so we've fallen so short. So and and we especially don't want other of our brothers and sisters to to really know how what what jerks we really are, you know, what what a, a you, all the 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 junk, and so we put on a we put on this mask. So we're we're the perfect believer, perfect Christian, perfect Jew, and you know what? As soon as you do that, it the whole, your focus is on. You're very aware of yourself. Oh, well, how do I look? How do I look? Well, that is the furthest thing. It'll keep you out of real exaltation. Exaltation comes from the Lord. When he comes and he says, friend, come up higher. Remember the parable? Friend, come up higher. And God will promote you. And when God promotes you, he puts you, you sit in the low seat, right? You come and, and you just help people you're doing. And all of a sudden, the Lord will just come invite you to his table. That's like those 36, that's a reference of 36 righteous or there's um, in Jewish uh, mysticism is uh, the, uh, there's the idea of these th 36 hidden uh, uh, leaders that are, that, and they're all hidden. Uh, we don't know who they are and uh and yet they are the ones that are ruling the world. You know, it's a, this whole idea of, see, God likes to hide his glory. And he always does, too. And that's the truth. I have found this. Whenever there's a great anointing on somebody or there's a something happening that's extraordinary, God is showing up through one of his children in a, in a special way. <clears throat> there's always something about that person that makes that you know there's a foolishness there there's some there's something that a reproach or there's a you know it'll be something that makes the pride of man bow you just there you know it might be a quirk about them or it might be a it's always something though and god loves to hide under that so you have to press through and that's the way it is for a revival too i remember when the joy of the lord uh the joy uh, and laughter came from heaven and we began to laugh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and those who were really laughing the hardest, 
those were the ones that really needed to laugh the most. <laughs> you know, people with a lot of problems. And God's people are not the ones that have it all together. They're the ones that admit, I, I can't do this on my own. And so whenever you, you always look for Yeshua inside of broken people, always look for him in unexpected places and unexpected people, because that's where you'll find him. You'll find him in the least of these. You'll find him in, in the soup kitchens, or you'll find him in the, on the street, or you'll find, you'll find hidden in uh, the, 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 you know, people that maybe go to your congregation or church that they have a lot of problems, you know, and, and, and they don't, and they're probably not going to change in this life. The Bible says so. He says you're to support those that are weak. And, well, but there's always a special grace on people like that. Always. God makes up the difference. And if you press in and, and you love them just like you would if they were King Solomon, and you treat them, treat everybody like that's Yeshua in disguise. I don't care if, if a rabbi is sleeping under the floor, I mean, sorry, under the table on the floor. Give him your bed, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and, and you know, this might be one of the greatest kings of all. And they're, they're, they're out on the street and you just don't, you don't recognize. And if you judge after the natural, you just walk right by them. But if you help these kind of people, whenever there's something that, that, you know, just rubs your flesh the wrong way, take a second look. Because inside, inside that person is a treasure. It's inside somewhere in there. Take extra, in fact, if you're really irritated, somebody keeps talking at you and, you know, they, they just, uh, who is this? Even more so, just stop and just wait for God to show up because he'll be hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> he will always 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 and then once you find that treasure connect with it and then you'll see something extraordinary happen god will exalt that person and they in in and because you took the time to do that you loving them and treating them just like they're the ambassador you know well they might be and that's the whole idea of these hidden zodics, the idea that that somebody may be way beyond and yet it doesn't seem like it. And uh, And the real truth is all of God's children are like that. There's, there's, and <clears throat> so ask God to show you, especially in your loved ones, show you the treasure inside of them instead of all the little irritations. The, don't look at the barnacles on the outside. Look at the treasure on the inside. You know, the barnacles on the ship, you know. They used to, they, they would go out to sea and then they'd get all this schmutz all over them. Just, there may be schmutz all over people, but <clears throat> what's inside of them, that's what's really, really precious. Bring that out. <clears throat> and celebrate it, and that person's life will change. <clears throat> Ask God to show you. Look past the, look past the 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 faults and the just like Jesus did for you. Look past the things and begin to see. Ask God to show you all the good things, not all the irritation things, hmm? because in the least of. Yeshua's brothers and sisters, you'll find divine treasure. <clears throat> and the more low on the supposed total, totem pole of this world's uh, view of people, uh, <clears throat> the way we tend to, you know, we tend to put people in, in order of importance and stature, prestige, that's always, <clears throat> God loves to turn that upside down and he'll do it every time so I go out of your way to find the lowest on the totem pole and lift them up go don't 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 try it and the amazing thing that'll happen is you'll end up 
<laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll end up, God will, God will lift you up even higher because that's the way, that's the way up. You want to go up? Go down. The way up is down. The way the kingdom is upside down. Everything's upside down. So the greatest is the least, right? And, and, and so don't miss God's kings and queens that are passing you in everyday life. And I know we've been isolated in our homes and stuff, and I'm, but we've got to get out. We gotta, we gotta assemble together. I, I'm ready to, I'm, I'm ready to be done with this, uh, this crazy uh, sh China virus shut in. I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to go out now. And uh, <clears throat> we're social beings, and we need each other. And so, praise God. Uh, anyway, that was a. I went on a. Shlomo journey, I think. It was not just a, a, a story. All right. Well, there's something else I haven't done in a while, so I think I'm going to do that too. Why not? Might as well cover all of the... Uh, I like to... We're going to take a, a, a little journey into the Christian world now, or the, or the hymn histories, and we'll look at a hymn. Let's see what the... And uh, I like to, to... These are... Most of them are, you know, historic hymns, uh, great, great uh, uh, anthems and sung hymns of, of church heritage. And this one, oh, yeah. Oh, this is a good one. You know this one, actually. This one is, It Is Well With My Soul. Well, this is one of my favorite favorites because the man who wrote this was one of the first of the the great Zionists of of uh, Horatio Spafford. Spafford was his name. So let me, uh, I'm going to read this to you and then, and then I'll sing it. You can, if you want to sing it with me, you can, but I'll always I'll try. <laughs> Perhaps no other gospel hymn has proven what the longevity of a scripturally based song can be, as has it is well with my soul. <clears throat> Hardly a week goes by. This is the man, uh, Alfred Smith, who compiled this and wrote about it. But that I <clears throat> hear it on some radio or television program. Of course, this is probably 40, 50 years ago that this was written. <clears throat> <clears throat> or hear it sung in a church. Yet it was written in 1873, over 100, now 133 years ago. Wow. 150, wait, uh, yeah, almost 140, 150 years. <clears throat> I'll relay the story of its writing as it was told to me back in the early 1940s by George C. Stebbins, an associate of D. L. Moody, the evangelist, and a man who know who knew both Horatio Spafford, the writer, and P. P. Bliss, the writers of this song, who wrote the melody. Mr. Spafford was a well known Christian lawyer, very successful in Chicago, who also had great holdings in real estate, a very wealthy man in the fast growing frontier town, back when Chicago was still a frontier town, I suppose. <clears throat> he had been led into a deeper dedication of his life and wealth to the Lord through his association with D.L. Moody and Henry Morehouse, the English Bible teacher who had come to Chicago <clears throat> and had preached seven sermons on John 3.16. In 1871, the great tragedy of fire struck Chicago, and in a manner of a few hours, much of Mr. Spafford's real estate holdings were nothing but ashes. <clears throat> this proved a real test for him, but little did he know there would be a far greater testing for him in the not-too-distant future. <clears throat> After the fire... Most of young Chicago lay in ruins. The first building erected on the ashes 
<coughs> was a building built by Mr. Moody called the North Side Tabernacle. <coughs> it was at this place that Mr. Spafford kept himself occupied in helping those whose loss and actual money was not as great as his, but, <coughs> like the widow who gave all, they had lost all. He was fortunate, for he still had his law practice, <coughs> his family, and also had some equity left, even after this fire. In November of 1873, <coughs> some two years after the fire, Many of the schools in Chicago had not yet been rebuilt, and so Mr. Spafford decided that he would take his family to England, <clears throat> where his children could enroll in an English academy and not be held back in their education. Just before they were to leave, <clears throat> a last-minute business development made it necessary for Mr. Spafford to remain in Chicago and to send his wife and children on ahead. He would come later on another ship. <clears throat> the Spafford family arrived safely in New York and boarded, and boarded the ship Villa de Havre. Soon they were on their way to England, but in mid-ocean <clears throat> there was a collision between their ship and an English sailing ship. The Villa de Havre floundered and sank taking with her to the bottom of the ocean most of those on board, including the Spafford's four daughters. Mrs. Spafford was found barely conscious, but clinging to a piece of the wreckage. <clears throat> While aboard the rescue ship, which was taking her and the other survivors to England, she was able to draft a short message which was sent to her husband in Chicago. It read, Saved Alone. <clears throat> when Mr. Spafford received this message, the tragedy of the fire seemed but nothing in comparison to what this cablegram implied. Money <clears throat> and burned buildings could be replaced, but his children were gone. It was through these clouds of darkness and despair <clears throat> that that there shone into the heart of H.G. Spafford the bright light of God's promise. <clears throat> God would not forsake him in the trying hours, no matter what the circumstances. Peace like a river or sorrows like sea billows with God, all is well. Captured by this thought, <clears throat> Mr. Spafford quickly penned the words of the song that would soon that soon would herald its way through the Christian church and encourage multitudes. It would continue doing so for over a hundred years, or now a hundred forty, hundred fifty, of course we don't sing it as much as we used to. I wish we would. When <clears throat> he finished writing the words, Mr Spafford took the poem over to a friend and neighbor who lived also lived on May Street. Uh, I think there in Chicago. His name was P. P. Bliss, the composer who gave the words a most fitting me melody, <clears throat> one that has kept the message of the song alive and vibrant all these years. Also, I want to say something about the phrase, it is well. If you remember, that was what the widow woman said to Elijah. Uh, after she had lost her son, she came, or is it Elisha? One of the, I think it's Elijah, but he, they came to him and uh, she came to him and she wouldn't actually confess what, what actually happened, that, that her son, her teenage son, I think, just, he had a headache and he died in, in her arms. And, and, but this was something that, that I think this is, I won't get in the story right in the Bible, so you um but she, all she, she said she'd say man man of god you promised this is a supernatural uh supernatural uh prophecy that you will have a, a son and and all of a sudden he died and well so uh he came uh, she came and, and anyway she would she said she just keeps saying it is well 
It is well, it is well. Of course, that's a confession of faith. Um, but uh, very often we have to <clears throat> hold fast our confession even when we are going through great times of suffering and tragedy. And so, but it is well, wait, I'm going to get something here. Hold on, I'm just getting, uh, I have a little back cushion here. I'm just putting in this. So I forgot to put that in <laughs> behind my back there. That's better. So I can sit up. <laughs> So I'm going to sing it now. I'll try. <clears throat> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate <clears throat> and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well. <laughs> it is well with my soul. My sin. <clears throat> oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, <clears throat> is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Forgive me, I don't claim to have a great voice, but I'm just, God wanted me to sing it, so I am. And this beautiful last verse. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is as well with my soul. Sing it with me. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Is it well with your soul tonight? See, our uh, being well with our soul is not dependent on circumstances. It's because, hallelujah, we are hid with Messiah in God. <laughs> and in good times we can rejoice. In difficult times, we can rejoice. Why? Because, hallelujah, God has turned everything for good. He turns everything in our lives for good as we intercede, especially letting the Holy Spirit pray for us. And what was evil, God, when it is evil, you know, tragedy happened. God didn't send the storm that, um, you know, God didn't kill his daughters and cause lose his whole... No, but he went through, <clears throat> he went through that. Now, it's interesting, Horatio Spafford 
uh, is what I said was one of the great <clears throat> Zionists, one of the first of the modern Zionists that uh, founded Israel. He ended up, <clears throat> in the latter part of his life, he moved to uh, Jerusalem, and you can still go today to the place, uh, it's a, uh, 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 the, 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 gosh, I'm trying to remember the name. He founded a, 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 like a hotel there, Jerusalem, I think it's Jerusalem Colony Hotel, I think that's what it's called. And there's a restaurant there now as well. And there's a plaque of, you know, but he, <clears throat> he uh, ended up, and and really uh, believing in the promises, and to, he helped a lot in those early days in the, you know, uh, around towards the turn of the uh, uh, 20th century, uh, and you know, before right right in those last years of the 19th century, he helped. <clears throat> I don't know the exact date, but he. Uh, uh, he did a lot for Israel. In fact, he's even commemorated <clears throat> by, uh, there's a beautiful, uh, there's a, a new museum that has been uh, uh, erected in, in uh, Jerusalem by <clears throat> Mike Evans and the, um, uh, I, I know the name, I played for them a couple of years ago. Beautiful ministry, but they have a, I, I actually did, I played that it is well with my soul there in that room, and there's a there's a, a history of Christian Zionists that helped found Israel, a uh, modern state of Israel, and he was he's one of the uh, most uh, strong. I mean, he did a lot. I and I have to re research that a little bit and study to remember exactly. But he he was he was a staunch supporter, and you know <clears throat> the Jews. We need all the friends we can get. <laughs> especially Christian friends. So, uh, but there's a beautiful uh, <clears throat> uh, memorial or tribute to him and, and other Zionists that came out of the, <clears throat> out of uh, particularly American Zionists. In fact, there was a man named William Blackstone as well, which fewer people know about, but he, <clears throat> he was a, uh, very active in a prayer movement in the about the same time uh, to pray for uh, the 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 return to Palestine, the turn to and the founding of Israel, <clears throat> and he even had a decree in the Congress, and there was a uh, or there was a, a a proclamation, I should say, uh, to uh, of the Christians to support. Uh, to support the Jews and love them and help them to reestablish their homeland, there was a great move, prayer movement. That's what birthed, that's what birthed the Zionist movement, which started really <clears throat> were the prophecy that Theodore Herzl uh, in 1898, I think, he stood up. He was in Paris. He was in France, I think, or Switzerland. Or I think he was in Paris, and he stood up and he said. He prophesied in 50 years, we will have a Jewish homeland. We will have, we will, we will, we will have our state. We will return. And uh, 50 years, exactly. Uh, that was when, the, uh, and it happened. So, uh, interesting. Oh, gosh. One of you that knows the, I know the name of it, and uh, I, I, I can just, I uh, the wonderful ministry. It's a huge, huge prayer ministry as well. But Zionists, Christian Zionists, and they're anyway. I'm very much a Zionist. I'm I'm uh, very committed to what is Zionism. Zionism is the belief in the physical restoration and the spiritual as well of of the Jewish people, like the Bible says, to, 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 of believing in the, 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 what the Bible promises about, uh, about the restoration of our people to the land of Israel, the, our ancient homeland, the promised land. So, and all that's happening and, and has happened. And, and anyway, my goodness, where, I think we've been going for, <clears throat> over an hour already. My goodness. 
it just flows. It's so wonderful. I can always tell there's been prayer made because it just, when it just comes gushing out, <laughs> I know. So, uh, hmm. praise the Lord. Well, what I want to do now is uh, we're going to receive communion. Um, but before we do, I want to, to at least uh, teach a little bit from the book of Revelation because we are... I believe we're at verse 12 of chapter 2, and we're in the, uh, I believe, the third of the seven churches when Yeshua gives his admonition and exhortation to these uh, churches in uh, that were in uh, on the on the west coast of modern day Turkey, or what used to be called Asia, Asia Minor. <clears throat> and uh but these this is uh verse 12 says and to the to the angel of the church at, in pergamos write <clears throat> these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with the two edges i know thy works <clears throat> and where thou dwellest even where satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name <clears throat> and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, <clears throat> who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast, thou hast the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So this uh, this is the third of these seven churches, and and uh, and y- y'all can go back. Uh, <laughs> we thank God we we archive these, and and so uh, we can go back. But I just want to continue with this uh, this uh, church. And so Pergamos was a town in Mysia, on the river Caucasus about 50 miles north of Smyrna. Smyrna was was the the second church. And uh so this is a this was a real uh church in the 1st century. And uh it it had <clears throat> it had like most churches, <laughs> it had a mixed message. It, there were good things about it and there were things that were not right about it. Of course, all of these seven churches have a prophetic message to the entire church age, which is why they're in the Bible. This is the last <clears throat> address in the scriptures that Yeshua gives to his church, and he does so not as Jesus the man on earth, but as the resurrected Lord of glory that we see <clears throat> revealed um, in heaven in the first chapter, and uh, we we had taught on that. So, <clears throat> verse thirteen says, verse thirteen says, well, no, first of all, he says these things. He he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Well, God's word is described as the sword of the spirit, or the. And and Yeshua is called, Jesus is called the word of God. And the sharp sword with two edges reminds you of a scripture, or me of a scripture in uh, 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 Hebrews 4.14, which says uh, God's word is sharper than a two-edged sword, penetrating and dividing asunder uh, soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is, the Bible is is different 
than any other book because it it is <clears throat> it is uh based in God himself he's he it's God breathed all scripture is profitable it's God breathed it's inspired but it also has great power and it has power what does a sword or a knife do it separates <clears throat> and it's able to separate your flesh from your spirit and is able to discern thoughts whether they are uh truth or lies it's able see that's why it's so important for us <clears throat> to let god uh uh in a way divide our thoughts or let god's word with the two edges uh it cuts both ways they used to say you know a sword a roman sword had two edges uh but <clears throat> it it, it it cuts both ways in the sense that it not only uh, brings it it brings deliverance. It's a weapon against evil. It's light in the dark. It's like a laser that that cuts through anything. Uh, as we proclaim God's word, especially the promises of God, which we do every day, we take our vitamins, we 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 proclaim it. But it's a two-edged sword in the sense that it also penetrates into us. And it brings correction, and it brings division. It 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 uh, it's, it helps us to discern, and it cleanses us. It's also uh, like water. Be washed with the water of the word. It's a uh, it it has an eternal. Uh, it, it it the sword. It's clean. The word of God is clean. It cleans you. You know. You have you ever seen someone clean a fish? You know, and they they. They take all the junk out. You know, well, this sharpness is able to clean out the junk, and and uh, so it. God's word, especially coming out of the mouth of, of of the master, as this is, it it's holy. It's it's very there, and 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 he has all authority. So it cuts through, and uh, it penetrates, and so he says. He's the one that has the sharp sword with two edges, it says. That's, that's what I got out of that. Verse 13, I know thy works. Now, every one of these seven churches, that's what Yeshua says, I know your works. So God is very aware of what we do, even though we think uh, it's all in secret. There's actually nothing in secret. In fact, Yeshua said, what you whisper in the ear will be shouted from the housetops. In other words, it's a, there's really nothing hidden. But uh, in the darkness, we think, you know, the wicked think, they're deceived to think, well, it doesn't matter. Nobody sees, nobody can tell. God, God's uh, not there or he's gone on a journey or he's taking a nap or he doesn't know. Well, no, it's, you are on heaven's camera all the time. And not only are you on not just video, but what's going on on the inside of you, every hidden thing. And so, uh, and that sharp sword, find it. And that's why it's important to let God cleanse you daily in his blood, in his word. And <clears throat> I say this, I take a bath or a shower every day in the two things that'll keep you clean and uh, not only clean, but it will... Uh, <clears throat> it it will uh, uh keep you in a place where you can live a sanctified holy victorious separated overcoming separated the sword of the spirit will separate you from evil and and wickedness and and fortify you to deny yourself and take up your cross follow Jesus and let his life pour out of you so so it's a it's a constant it's a constant god's word is so precious but every one of these he says i know your works i know everything about you i know every hidden thing about you and by the way no one loves you more even though he knows every the worst about you the best about you and he loves you and yet hallelujah he's loves you too much to he loves us too much to keep us the way we are. He sent his word to to heal us, to cleanse us, and to prepare us that we could be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. 
So, <clears throat> I know your works. Now, again, each one of these seven churches, it in in the in the in our uh, in our day, we you know we we say things like, well, God knows I meant well. I had good intentions. God knows my heart. But he doesn't say, I know your heart. He says, I know your works. Uh, so to, to say that, 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 that what we do isn't important or it's the, where the, God's grace just blind, in other words, it, it absolves you of all responsibility to live a holy life is error, is wrong. It's, uh, it, it, it'll lead you astray. Uh, but the grace of God gives us the power and the ability to live in a way that's pleasing to God, and it will perfect us uh, as we grow. We our fruit and our works will be pleasing. They'll be sweet. They'll be good. They'll be full of love. They will be a manifestation of our abiding in the vine. Amen. <clears throat> so God knows our works. But he ought, and 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 he's discerning. So this right here is a very clear picture of the word of God that is judging this church, Pergamos. It's dividing. He's saying, "I know your works and where you dwell." You know, <clears throat> some of us uh, have greater darkness, perhaps, in where we live, and and than others. Well, um, <clears throat> now, first of all, he. Anyway, verse 13, it says, I know where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. And then there's three commendations now. And now, but you've done three things that please me. Huh, not good. Oh. <clears throat> it says, uh, he's pleased. He's, you've held fast my name. You have not denied my faith. Even when Antipas was martyred, and uh and he says and and you you have you have good it's implied that you have good works you have something good uh and then so god was commending the, them for the uh these things the lord was <clears throat> now satan's seat here is mentioned twice it's thought to refer to the removal of the headquarters of the ancient Babylonian cult uh, that was in Pergamos. There was a, a, a pagan cult uh, that they actually had a, uh, a throne to... Uh, and, and in the ancient world, see, Babylon was a seat of authority, particularly in the ancient world. And if you want to go... <clears throat> uh, back in, and uh, one of the very the very first vision I had was on, and the Lord showed me about uh, there's different Babylons in the Bible, and you have to discern there's six, and really seven uh, total. Uh, there's three prophetic end time. About it's the system of rebellion. Uh, <clears throat> also, I'm reading a book. We will continue with that by Dr. Francis Schaeffer called. Christian Manifesto, and he talks about the great, uh, the, the worldview of secu secular humanism, which is just a neo-pagan. It's the same lie. It's the lie that you are God, and you're the center of the universe. So it's, it's it was as, in any way, Pergamos was, he knew where they dwelt because they were, <clears throat> it was a, a, a stronghold of evil. It's like if you were living in downtown Baltimore or to try, I know you live in Baltimore, but you better, <laughs> or uh, you live in, um, or you live in some place that, that has uh, a lot of satanic worship or whatever. Okay, so there is a, a level of warfare spiritually in some places that seems like it's more than others and God understand, the Lord understands that. But they held fast to the name of Messiah, hallelujah, and they did not deny their faith, even though there was open persecution and even a martyrdom that was very, uh, 
it was terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> so you haven't denied my name. That word deny in the Greek is ar neomei, deny. It is possible, it is possible for Christians to deny the faith. And, uh, and it's happened a number of times. In other words, uh, because of the persecution, this is going to happen uh, in some places. See, when, when uh, a tragedy comes, or a, it'll either bring out the best or the worst in you. Uh, when, when, every, when your world is shaken, like uh, <laughs> Pastor Jerry uh, Zirkel used to say, when your bucket's bumped or kicked, whatever it's full of, that's what splashes out. So we find out what's inside of you, uh, you know, or another picture of that uh, would be a refining fire when you heat up the, uh, the, uh, the metals, it, it, it purifies it and the dross is separated from the gold. Uh, so this is another picture of that. And God does refine us. God does use everything for good. He uses, even when we fall into traps of, of Satan and we are, uh, we, and he, he has had opportunity to, <clears throat> to uh, attack us or we've experienced certain things, um, <clears throat> that the question to ask is not why God or why me or, well, I thought, you know, you were going to protect me and you didn't. Well, God is protecting you. He's protecting you the most he possibly can. And, and he always does. But you live in a world at war. And he warns us over and over. Our security, just like it is well with my soul. Even if I lost everything. I mean, another hymn, uh, another hymn is um, uh, A Mighty Fortress. It says, let goods... And kindred go, Martin Luther writes, this mortal body also, you know, even if, even so, or like the Hebrew children, yes, uh, you're heating the furnace seven times hotter and, and uh, uh, we're not going to bow to that image. We're not going to deny the faith. Uh, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from your fiery furnace Nebuchadnezzar, and he will. That's their confession of faith. And he will. God delivers me. Psalm 91. I stand on that. But if not, in other words, if for some reason uh, I've missed it or God, what, e even if it doesn't happen that way, I still won't bow. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of believer that uh, like Antipas was. He just wouldn't deny the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now he says here, verse 14, but I have a few things against thee because thou hast, thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak, am I in the right place? Yeah. Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. Okay, so <clears throat> there's actually four things here that Yeshua, uh, uh, it, it's condemned or it's, it's, uh, he, he rebukes them. <clears throat> so you, you, this, this was the first and then the, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, to commit fornication, and so thou also hast them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. By the way, notice that word hate. Well, Jesus is love. He just he just loves everybody and everything, but he doesn't. He hates sin. <clears throat> Did you know uh, uh, it's not wrong to rebuke sin and to stand for for holiness and righteousness? <clears throat> the war was telling me about somebody today that was, gosh, I uh, was out there preaching. I think she's, I think it's in Washington. <clears throat> she was, this lady or somewhere, she was, she was painting 
black over the, uh, the black paint over Black Lives Matter. And she's out there getting in their face with these Antifa people and saying, and she's rebuking them and it, and preaching at them and she won't shut up. And she's, she's so bold. And well, you know what? <clears throat> that's, that's, see, God hates anything that destroys people. He hates sin. Sin and evil and Satan and lies. <clears throat> I hate lies. You know, that's why, you know what? I'm so thankful. Like when I do watch the news, which is not very long, I usually do when I'm eating, you know, I eat something, I'll turn on the news and see, just get an update for a few minutes. And <clears throat> if somebody comes on that is a liar, well, these are not tales on a garbage can, you know. I I don't listen to liars, so <laughs> I just, thank God, I don't have to listen to that. I'll turn it back on when they leave. Why? Because there's two kingdoms. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> he said here, uh, these holding the doctrine of Balaam. So what is that? The doctrine of Balaam, <clears throat> I'll just really quickly, you can look over in 2 Peter 2.15 and you see the, the three great sins of Balaam <clears throat> was his way. This was the love of the wages of, of unrighteousness. He was a false prophet. He was hired <clears throat> to prophesy and curse Israel, Balaam. And uh, the, the Bible calls it the wages of unrighteousness. And he coveted the gifts of Balak. So there was a coveting of, <clears throat> of uh, the Bible also calls that filthy lucre. In other words, someone who is, is prophesying for hire because the blessing of God was on Balaam <clears throat> or at one time, or at least Balak thought so. He said, come and curse Israel. Well, and he couldn't do it even though his heart was wrong. <clears throat> he still, when he got up, the, the Lord just turned the, his words in his mouth. Nevertheless, the sin of Balaam was very great and the New Testament uh, does condemn him as a false prophet. <clears throat> so there's also the error of Balaam. This was, again, accepting the wages of unrighteousness for his services in giving the secret of how to get God to curse Israel. So it was a, it was a plot. <clears throat> and then there's also the doctrine of Balaam. This was to teach Balak that if he would give his most beautiful women to the Israelite men and cause them to commit idolatry and adultery, uh, that God himself would curse Israel. So there was a, there was, and there's also a lot uh, in the oral tradition that talks about Balaam. And uh, in, in, <clears throat> I don't have so much time to. Uh, 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 so he was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb donkey which spoke with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. So Peter uh, soundly condemns Balaam, and he was a he was uh, corrupt, and he. What he did was like a Benedict Arnold. He had a true, he had a calling to bless and instead he cursed or he, he prophesied the lies of the devil. There's a lot of so-called prophets, modern day prophets that are actually prophesying is not, it's not leading God's people into holiness or purity. It's not, it's a, more like fortune telling. Uh, and that's a very dangerous thing. And and to try to do that. Uh, so that's the thing, one of the things that uh, the Lord hated. Somehow they were being manipulated and seduced in this area of false prophecy in uh, Pergamos. <clears throat> so. And then we talked about Nicolaitans uh, in the last uh in, in, in the, one of the previous uh, 
lessons at church and and there uh, that was an see it's like false doctrines and and things that were creeping in and we have to be careful of that so now look at verse 16 <clears throat> repent or else i will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth there's another reference to the sword of the lord <clears throat> So this church uh, was soundly rebuked by our Lord. That should settle the matter of whether the Lord rebukes his people and corrects them or not. <laughs> uh, it's right here. It's in red. Uh, that's the words of Yeshua. That's, that's his. And it's, it's new covenant. Absolutely. He's speaking to the churches. Interesting, again, to note that the only place the ecclesia, the church, is uh, prominent in the scriptures, I mean, sorry, in the book of Revelation, is in the second and third chapter, and then they're never mentioned again in the book of Revelation. The focus then goes to Israel and the Jewish people and how God uses this time of tribulation to, to uh, protect, preserve them, and save them out of it, the time of Jacob's trouble. So there's a, the, the, there is a conspicuous absence of, I mean, look at it. It's not in, it's not in there. You see, you, you do have a reference to tribulation saints. You have references to those who believe, those who are one to God, uh, those who, and they are beheaded for their faith and they are, are martyred and, and perhaps even uh, different waves of harvest and rapture, uh, the ministry of the 144,000, the ministry of the two witnesses. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a harvest out of that and you see that in heaven, how they get there. Uh, is open to interpretation, but they get there and they're there. So, and they suddenly get there. So uh, perhaps there is more than just one rapture in the book of Revelation. In my opinion, there could very easily be three, at least uh, uh, three different phases of harvest of, of the righteous in the book of Revelation. There, <clears throat> the the most prominent, of course, is the church is there, chapter two and three, and then it's gone. It's never mentioned again. Well, you know where to go. Uh, where to go? <laughs> well, he says, climb up here or come up here. Sorry, not climb. Come up here at the beginning of chapter four. So we'll get to that. Uh, don't pull me into that yet. I'm. But there is also one. There's a, there's a harvest of the ministry of the 144,000, which is mid, in, midway through the book of, of, of uh, uh, book of Revelation. <clears throat> and then there's another, uh, there's another at the end of when the coming of our Lord, those who, who will believe and set up the, the, the uh, Davidic kingdom and live as natural people and the, they, they were not uh, they, they were their natural people that alive and remain then so <clears throat> there is a there is a translation somehow either they all died and they got uh, got to heaven by being martyred but it, I don't think so I'm not sure but there are those that survive and there's different waves and, and, and anyway. Oh. All right, so he says here, uh, sorry, Mr. Dake, I like Finnis Dake's, uh, he says, this is the fifth prophecy of Revelation is, here, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. This is fulfilled in, uh, uh, Revelation uh, two seventeen is unfulfilled, so repentance is required of all backsliders. 
you can backslide and you must come back. <laughs> what is backsliding? Well, backsliding is just compromise. We have to overcome. Overcoming, remember each one of these churches, Yeshua uh, uh, requires overcoming. And at one time I was reading uh, and meditating on Revelation and the uh, book of Revelation and the Lord said, overcoming is not an option. It's a necessity. You have to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil with the Holy Spirit, the new nature, the word of God, and, uh, and taking up your cross and following Yeshua daily. Does that mean I don't believe in grace or that it's God that saved me apart from works? Yes, my salvation is completely a gift. However, it's also something that Paul uh, said, I work out my salvation with fear and trembling. So it's like a marriage. You know, a marriage isn't 50-50, it's 100-100. It's hard work. You have to lay down your life to have a, to have a good marriage. It's, you know... <laughs> in the sense of you you're going to be resisted and if you just coast it's very easily very easy to backslide and get off course so you know you can't just you can't just be a blob and float through you have to resist evil um, <clears throat> there is a narrow way that leads to life broad is the way that leads to destruction many and few uh, are the Contrast, Yeshua says. <clears throat> there is a possibility of backsliders not repenting. That's clear from the fact that if they did not repent, they would be judged. All right. So verse 17 says, To him that overcometh, here we go, him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Only the overcomer is promised heaven. And hidden manna is, hallelujah, there is uh, the, the revelation of God's word is like manna. Manna is the precious angel's food. He says, man did eat angel's food and the manna in the wilderness. But there is uh, also the fruit from the tree of life. There's heavenly food. Did you know? You talk about gourmet food. Heaven is full. You talk about the pastries of heaven. Oh my goodness. Ooh. So... It's interesting, though, here, only the overcomer is promised heaven. So there is something to overcome. You are in a world that, that's at war. You have an enemy that wants to destroy your soul. And uh, we, have to, uh, we have to pray. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation or you enter into it. Uh, lead us not into temptation. You know, there is, uh, there is that's why it's... Uh, it, it is a, a challenge and and it, and it more than a challenge you you have a, there's an evil uh, genius if you will uh, that is studied you and tries to tries to trip you up and using your own flesh and uh, deception and battle in your mind lies that's I tell you what we're being flooded with lies right now in in the earth in our country and in and you have, that's why you need a constant immersion and saturation in God's word. So you can combat the lies with truth and uproot the lies and replace them with the truth. The truth about yourself, the truth about the world we live in, the truth about politics, the truth about just plain the truth with a capital T. Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. So the hidden, this word hidden, uh, here, hidden manna is, uh, hold on, is something that's kept secret. What is promised is made uh, clear, real manna to eat, but the kind, what kind is hidden? All right, so there's a hidden nourishment for the last days. There's a, there is a when you are in the right place, God can feed you. Angels came came and fed Elisha, you know. He had bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. I mean, he, he was sustained and fed physically. But we are fed and nourished, 
hallelujah, by our heavenly uh, shepherd who feeds us. Feed us with the bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Amen. Hallelujah. So now, let's look at this. Another thing is a white stone, okay? I will give you hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone. What is that? These were known to the ancients as victory stones, Mr. Dake writes. <clears throat> also in ancient times, they meant pardon and the evidence of it. Judges had white and black stones. If a black one was given, the criminal, if it was given the criminal, he was condemned. If a white stone, he would be pardoned. Conquerors in the pub public games were also given white stones in Rome uh, with their names in them, which entitled them to be supported for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's the gladiators, you know. And that's interesting, isn't it? So it was a white stone. <clears throat> and and it was at public expense. It's like a, a pension, if you will. Perhaps all three things are meant by the white stone of the overcomer. Yeah, so there's, that's a, uh, <clears throat> that would make a lot of sense in the first century to uh, those that living there. They would understand a white stone represents redemption. It remain, it also is a champion. It's something that is rewarded to a one who overcomes. And the idea of overcoming is, is, uh, winning over evil all right so <clears throat> and god gives us a new name well I, that's a that is something that uh, of course as a new creation we have a new name but the lord in see in in the he, hebrew world a name also d has the description of the person like Yeshua was given a name above all names. Well, that name means something. It, it's not Fred. It's it's you know, it's it's a, it's a, a, Yeshua means saved or salvation or the Lord is is salvation. Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus. <clears throat> well, if we are going to be given names that are precious <clears throat> it'll be hidden in the sense that uh there are certain things that the lord will just share with you there's a part of the rewards that we receive of the overcomers is <clears throat> is uh uh in the intimate fellowship just with god and you and uh in these areas where you have entered into a sacrificial type of you've loved God so much that you died to certain things you did that. those have they're, they're, they will be rewarded in everlasting crowns and jewels that <clears throat> which I've seen by God's grace uh, we are to contend for that uh, we are to contend for <clears throat> in the same way as we would against uh, you know if you saw a Roman gladiator spectacle you have to uh, or whatever, <coughs> or uh, you have to defeat the adversary. And when you do, there's great uh, acclaim. Well, that's awesome. But this is where it really matters. It says, Paul says, <coughs> we, the world competes for a corruptible crown or in the, in the, in the Roman days, they would wear a laurel or uh, <coughs> the conquering uh, military generals or those that that won in the Olympics or in the Roman games <clears throat> it's like having a, a it's like having a, a, a Super Bowl ring or something you know <clears throat> except that it, the the eternal rewards are so so much more precious see that's a corrupt way the Super Bowl ring won't mean anything uh, past that generation unless <clears throat> there was something done <laughs> for the, the kingdom. See, de mitzvahs, good deeds done for the kingdom 
you have to overcome in order to do that and walk in the love of God. <clears throat> That's costly. In other words, it's, does, it doesn't come easy because you have to, to overcome your own flesh. You have to selfishness. You have to, and, and, and as you <clears throat> lay down your life every day, there are hidden things that God will bring up and some of them will be so precious that, that they're, they're so sacred. You can't, there's some things God talks to me about I cannot share. So there's precious things that are hidden and some things that are openly celebrated. <clears throat> but the Lord has a unique and individual uh, individual rewards for us, which will go on <clears throat> the rewards and during the time of the seven years of the wedding supper and the 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 judgment seat of the of of our Lord. Uh, when we, when we are, uh, when we will be uh, also given our assignments, and uh, in the realm of <clears throat> even judging angels, uh, ruling and reigning in the olam haba, the world to come, ruling and reigning have to do with <clears throat> the Davidic kingdom that's coming. We we will kind of we will be in different positions even in our resurrected bodies and we'll help those that are still in their natural bodies. Those are going to be <clears throat> natural people uh, that, and it will be a thousand years of uh, perfection. And uh, during that time, <clears throat> there will be like, you know, the parable says that there, there is, uh, Yeshua said one will give you, have rule over, one city or two cities or ten cities, well, that may be literal, or, <clears throat> but it will be realms of, and with attached to these, and then eternal assignments, you've been faithful with little, you will be ruler over much. So these eternal positions and assignments <clears throat> are uh, are accompanied with glories, glory. Uh, there's different realms of glory. <clears throat> and the more, the more you love deeply like Yeshua and serve on this earth. And uh, the greater, <clears throat> the greater the, when those hidden things are exposed, it will be bring glory to the Lord and it will also bring a celebration and you will be honored for those, for those things that you <clears throat> love not your life to that you laid down your life. And uh, these are <clears throat> of great, they're prized, they're of great uh, value. The riches of heaven, the true riches, are the acclaim of the Lamb of God, the smile of God on you is worth more. I mean, <clears throat> you would go back and live your life and suffer even more for a thousand years just to get one smile like that. <clears throat> That's how much wonderful, how, how, how wonderful it is. I, mean, I don't know how to say it any other way. So, <clears throat> all right. So anyway, this is, uh, <clears throat> So certain things, verse 17, uh, in these overcomers' rewards are hidden. It's just between you and God. And only, it says uh, only, it, he's going to write a new name, <clears throat> which is a description of God's unique love for you and God's, uh, and a celebration of your reward and what you did for him. <clears throat> which no man knows, saving he that receiveth it. So, anyway, that's uh, we looked at the Church of Pergamos, and uh, next time we'll we'll continue with the Church of Thyatira. <clears throat> so that's verse eighteen. So we'll we'll go on uh, in a uh, hopefully a, in, in. Well, I don't like to say when because sometimes the Lord. We preempt this for a special, <laughs> the Lord wants me to just flow and prophesy. So, okay, now we do that. That's all right. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. 
Let's receive communion and our vitamins tonight. The Lord's giving me grace so I could actually teach and flow in that. That's nice. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. But I like whatever he does. Yeah. So let's, uh, I like to put some music on. So let's find, I'll find something here. Music. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting better at the iPad here. <clears throat> so, let's see. You know what? Tonight I'm going to put on... Um, how about El Shaddai? This is... Uh, <clears throat> I did in the 90s with the London Philharmonic. <coughs> this is uh, El Shaddai. Well, this is Jehovah Jireh, the song. So I just want to put this on. Hallelujah. So <coughs> let's receive our come to the table of the Lord. Abba Father, we praise you and thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your sweet anointing. Thank you for your, this wonderful blessing of coming intimately and joining with you. Hallelujah. The blessing on, on the bread. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Hamotzi lechemin haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Blessing on the wine. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Yeshua, the night he was betrayed, took the, the bread and he broke it and he said, take and eat. This is my body, <clears throat> broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember, Lord, we remember your death, but we remember what you bore. You bore our sicknesses and our infirmities and our pains and <clears throat> every damnable thing that Satan can do to man. You took our place so we could be healed, so we could receive shalom, the chastisement of our peace for our minds, for our souls, for our emotions <clears throat> was upon you. You suffered great drops of blood, torment when you drank the cup of our sin and took upon yourself all those terrible things. <clears throat> and you brought forth life by your stripes. Your body was broken so we could receive healing. Receive healing tonight. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Yeshua's mighty name, receive the body of Messiah. Thank you, Lord. You are our Yahweh Yireh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. You're the God who sees and provides. Thank you, Lord. Yeshua took the cup and he said, This is my blood, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Pour it out for you, shed for you, for the remission of sins. Drink this, and as often as you do, you do show my death until I come. Lord, we thank you <clears throat> that your blood 
has more than covered our sins. It's remitted and blotted them out. You forgave us and cleansed us. Forgive us and cleanse us again tonight. Oh, and we worship you, Lord. We thank you for your precious blood. Oh, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb of God. You are El, our El Shaddai, a God who's more than enough. We forget not your benefits. Hallelujah. He forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. And come back to the Lord if you've been far away. Come back into fellowship. The Good Shepherd will take you. He'll take you back. Come back. Return, O backsliders. Jesus, we worship at your holy throne. You are our Mashiach, our Messiah. Salvation is in no other name. It literally is your name. Yeshua is salvation. Amen. The blood of Messiah. Praise the holy name of the Lord. Glory to God. You know what's important? You have to mix faith with everything you do. See, it's not so much that, um, although this is the one thing God, uh, the Lord tells us to do in a physical way, and God says, I am you know, I'm in this uh, as often as you do it. However, you have to do it as a point of contact. Oral Roberts used to say, a place to release your faith. Release faith in the, the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Messiah, you see? And as we do that every day, there's a transformation that takes place. <clears throat> That's why God said, do this. And that's why Yeshua didn't put a, a, well, you can only do this every third Tuesday at three o'clock or uh, only do it once a year or do it once every four years. Well, some things, some things are, we do in remembrance of him, but this is, uh, you know, they, the, the high churches uh, or the Catholic uh, tradition calls that uh, he calls it the sacraments, the sacred things. Well, there is something, there's something special in it, especially communion. But if you do it just as a, a ritual, I think it has very little effect on you. But when you do that from your heart and you surrender and you worship the Lord and you realize I am, and you release your faith. I am coming again into union with the master. You see? <clears throat> then it, it, the Lord does something supernatural. He actually becomes this body and blood. He does. He comes into you. You eat his flesh. You drink his blood. And <clears throat> I can testify I'm a different person just since I, I'm so glad I do this every day, nearly every day. Uh, you know, here and and uh, and just remember, you know, this is a relationship. This is a holy, uh, living relationship with the risen Lord. Hallelujah! He'll come and he'll sup with you. He'll he said, "Come and dine." This is how we dine in the spirit. All right, praise the Lord. Well, let's receive our oh. <clears throat> Okay, well, we're coming right up on 8.30 here, but I'm going to, uh, I start at 6.30. <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, we're going to receive our vitamins. We'll go a little bit over. And, of course, this is from James Riddle's books on uh, promises, a compilation of promises for uh, uh, healing and for prosperity. 
which are the benefits of this blood covenant that we've entered into this new and glorious better covenant where the blessing of Abraham comes on the Gentiles. So there's the blessing of Abraham was for Israel, but then through Messiah, because he bore the curse, he, he pours that blessing out on whosoever will. And that blessing is every good benefit of heaven for the abundant life. He says, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. This is the meal that heals and brings life. And the word life is zoe, new kind of life that Yeshua brought that is a resurrection life. And I like to say, l'chaim, to life. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at our healing promise today. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Gosh, I feel... I feel his love, his that blanket of love. Ooh, it feels like warm honey just dripping. Honey, more than honey out of the honeycomb. You know, just dripping, drip. Oh, the oil and the joy and the, the, the honey. And, mm, I don't know how to describe it. I just, it's sweet and it's warm and it's wonderful. It's God's, it's that glory. So our healing promise today is <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 and 36. It is written, <clears throat> When the men of that place recognized Yeshua, they sent out <clears throat> into all that surrounding region, region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. He's right here. And you just touch his garment, glory to God, and life enters you. And it manifests in the blessing of God, the healing power of God. It's all present. At the same time God forgave us, he healed us. Glory to God. Jesus is our healer. So let's pray and, 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 and receive this promise now out loud. So just pray after me. Abba Father, in Yeshua's mighty name, I pray and I thank you that you are so good to me. You meet me where I am and work with me at a level that I can understand. You work wherever there is faith. I believe in you, Lord. If I need to focus on the hem of a garment, you will work with that. <clears throat> if I can hold fast to the spoken word, you will work with that as well. All that you require is <clears throat> that I trust you and that I have faith. I believe, Father, and I do and will act on that belief always in Yeshua's name. I declare in faith, God is so devoted to my healing that he does and will use whatever means of faith that I can cling to in order to make me well. God wants me well. Amen. I receive my wellness. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and healed right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Be healed of the, yeah, be healed of those ulcers right now. Be healed of the uh, of the allergies, the, the the stomach allergies and the the sinus uh, condition and the allergies. Be healed of 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 eye uh, out alert allergies in the eyes, dry eyes, anything with with uh, uh, yeah with uh, also swelling. Um, uh, be healed in be healed in your vision right now. Be healed. In, uh, hallelujah, there is a, yes, I hear the words, mitral valve la prolapse, be healed of that. What is that? That's something with the heart, I think. Be healed of that right now. Amen. Uh, be healed of the, <clears throat> yes, someone uh, at night, 
uh, sometimes when you sleep, <clears throat> you suddenly cramp up, like your legs cramp, uh, one, one side in particular cramps up and it's excruciating pain. And God is delivering you from that right now. Hallelujah. Somebody that has, oh, you've had clinical depression, terrible depression for many years. Uh, the Holy Spirit's giving me some, some uh, word of knowledge, which is just a piece of information to release healing gifts, the gifts of healings. <clears throat> Receive, be delivered out of depression. Uh, yes, be delivered from suicide and those those tormenting thoughts and hopelessness. It's leaving you. That demonic, that demon is broken off. You go from them. Leave them and torment them no more. The, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, someone else with a, another condition in the heart, a fluttering or a, 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 a not, well, it's, it's like a very fast heartbeat. Uh, it's something that Pastor Benny used to have, I think. Uh, I don't remember the technical name for it, but be healed of that right now, this racing of the heart. Uh, be, <clears throat> be healed of the, the uh, bipolar, uh, the, the chemical imbalance right now. Uh, be set free from seizures right now, epileptic seizures, seizures, uh, ticks and... Uh, uh, spasms go from you now. Uh, yes, uh, be healed of the... Yes, there's someone that has had... Um, uh, <clears throat> you had an injury and, and you lost feeling on in one of your legs. I think it's your left leg. <laughs> and the Lord is doing something to your nerves at and your spine, your lower spine, the nerve uh, connections there, come alive in Yeshua's name. Uh, yes, brain, uh, 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 parts of the brain that, that, that died, uh, certain, God is activating that right now. I, I, I see the back of the head, and I see this, this side. I'm, of course, I'm not a, that kind of doctor, so, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know the technical names, but I see just parts of the brain that uh, God is just touching the nervous system and, the, and, the, and uh, <clears throat> your memory. Someone, yes, an elderly relative has lost memory uh, and, it, uh, uh, and God is, is it's just having mercy on them right now. Amen. And uh, their, last, uh, their last days, they will, God says, I'm going to, they, they, they won't lose anymore. They're going to get it back. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's receive our, our prosperity vitamin today. It's Psalm 78, verses 18 through 29. Well, that's a long one today, but that's all right. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. This was uh, my great, 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 great grandparents, right? They didn't do so well in the wilderness, did they? Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? <clears throat> Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel. In case you don't think God can get angry, there you go. <clears throat> because they believed not in God. Because they believed they didn't believe in God. They believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from, from above <clears throat> and opened the doors of heaven, let me turn this down a little bit, and had rained down manna upon them to eat <clears throat> and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. <clears throat> he caused an east wind to blow in the heaven and by his power he brought in the south wind. 
He rained flesh also upon them as dust, <clears throat> and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, <clears throat> round about their habitations, so they did eat and were well filled. Say, well filled. Amen. Uh, uh, well filled. For he gave them their own desire. God is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy endureth forever. So let's uh, pray together. Abba Father, in Yeshua's mighty name I pray. And I thank you that I have settled in my heart that I <clears throat> will always trust you despite what my eyes may see or my senses tell me. Your blessings never fail and your word always rings true. I declare right now that you are God <clears throat> and you are all powerful and all knowing Nothing is impossible for you. No matter what my situation is, you are well able to provide for me. <clears throat> I trust you with all of my heart and refuse to give in to the circumstances. I believe in you, Father. I do not and will not cave in to doubt and unbelief. Especially, I won't, won't say, I won't grumble and complain. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Abba, Father, I recall all that you have accomplished in my life. You have done great and mighty works that defy explanation. I remember, Father, I thank you for always being there for me. You've never failed me, and you never will. I know you do and will always be there for me. You fill me with my heart's desires. I will never forget. Thank you, Lord. Nor take for granted the goodness you have shown me. I make it my life's commitment to live without greed or selfishness. I refuse to be self-centered. I declare I'm Messiah-centered. Amen. I seek profit that I may be a blessing and display your goodness in all the earth. I declare in faith, I trust in the Lord, and lean not unto my own understanding. I know that he is with me at all times to prosper me and bring me and bring to me good success. His word <clears throat> is my final authority in all circumstances. I am not out to become rich in order to consume it with lust. It is God's will alone that I pursue. I receive what he wants me to receive and live the way that he wants me to live. My prayer is that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They live well in heaven. Therefore, I live well on earth. Far be it from me to take hold of false humility and not receive his wonderful blessings. I receive, Father, your abundant blessings that were purchased at such a great price by your precious life, your, your sacrifice for me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, glory to God. I... Uh, I uh, Yes, I just saw that word, palpitations. Yes, that's what it is, Kyrie Rosen. Well, irregular, yeah, God did a lot of healing in hearts tonight. I really believe that and just different. Let me know because, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm clever enough to think of it, uh, think, think of all those things. That I believe it's God, you know, I really do. Of course, you have to believe too. <laughs> And that's how you receive. That's the, like the electricity of heaven. That's the power source. You have to believe God is a faith being and he requires that of us. We have to actually believe that what he said is true <laughs> and, and, and take it. Yeah, that's, that there's, that's the just shall live by faith. It's, that's the only way to live. 
you want to live, you have to live that way. And I, and, uh, I want to experience as much of the good life that God has, heavenly life here on earth is possible and is God's will for us that we bring, uh, we bring heaven to earth in our lives. He wants to do that. That's the, a good daddy wants his children to do better than he did. Well, he wants, our heavenly daddy wants us to, to, to succeed and do well. Yeah, and bring glory to him. However that, and be, obey him and trust him. He's a good God. God is a good God. Swedish. I remember hearing it in Sweden. Good are in God. Good. Good. I, I didn't. It's hard to say. That's why I learned that. I tried to practice it. But God is a good God. Oral Roberts would always say that. And he used to get persecuted for it. The Christians didn't want God to be a good God. They wanted him to be a mean religious monster, which he isn't. All right. Well, listen, I have to say good night to you and I want to bless you as as we as we uh as we do that. And as we say good night, I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing. Hallelujah. He always has something special prepared, uh and I try to listen and take time to 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 get to to get the right tune into the right signal <laughs> y'all keep praying for me praise the lord uh <clears throat> remember that we do depend upon you for uh our support and uh we appreciate your offerings and your gifts and your ties and things that god has how you have come into relationship a partner relationship with this ministry and i believe in partnership i I am also, I also partnered with uh, ministries. If God's asked you to do that and come into a monthly, uh, you know, prayer and finances, financial giving and, and praying, hallelujah, that's how we do it. Uh, there's a special blessing. You partake of the grace and the anointing that's over Beit Rafa is yours. And you can enter into that in a more powerful way. And, and as we sow bountifully, remember, you reap bountifully. And uh, I am i tell you what, I'm put, putting God to the test in that area. And you know what? He's fast every time. <laughs> no, I mean, you can't outgive God. Ask God what he would have you to do if he wants you to sow something uh, tonight. If you, if you would, uh, if, you, if God wants you to, then uh, just uh, go to Sklar Ministries. Thank you, Ina Ruth, those beautiful hearts. Sklar Ministries, S-K-L-A-R Ministries, and there's a donate button there via PayPal, or if uh, you need some other arrangement, uh, you know, just write me a little note uh, and say, you know, uh, contact you. I will personally message you if you need my address or something like that. That's okay. But it is safe and it's trustworthy. <clears throat> and because uh, Devora is so good at all that, she catches things. We somebody tried to somebody tried to do something fake, and we just shut it down. And it's not that. Uh, uh, so it's safe, and and uh, we are a, a tax uh, exempt and ministry. So all right. Um, I'm going to bless you now, and uh, we're going to say good night. And I want to thank you for thank you for joining me this evening. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you, and be gracious unto you. May He give you His shalom, peace. And now, may the grace of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the love of God, and the communion and comfort of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. 
I love you. And uh, remember, uh, I will be praying for you at 11 o'clock uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a couple hours from now for, uh, uh, before I, before I go, go to bed myself. I always pray through and lift up your, your name and ask God's blessing over you and, and cover you. And I uh, always agree with any scriptural, of course, you know, prayer request or desire of your heart. Two of us agree. God said he would do it. And, uh, uh, and so I just believe uh, that he answers prayer. And we've seen a lot of answers to prayer. So uh, uh, I want to bless you tonight. Thank you for, thank you for, for being with me tonight. And, and uh, we'll see you, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow at <clears throat> 6 o'clock. If it takes me a little bit more time, it's usually because to come on is usually just because there's, um, you know, sometimes things, you know what it's like. But I... I plan on being on at six. So, all right. Uh, have a wonderful evening, uh, remainder, or if you're if it's late tonight, or you turn in tomorrow, or whatever. Just be blessed and and uh, and know that I I love you, I care about you, and I I I'm just very appreciative that that you have joined with me here at Beit Rafa. Shalom, shalom. Good night.